Hello and welcome to another video by Game, by Game Dev, Dev Journey. Journey. In today's video we're going to look at simple animations in Godot, Construct and Game Maker. We'll be firing a ball from a cannon and examining the workflow of each engine. If you enjoy it please tap that like button and consider subscribing if you want to support me. First off let's have a look at what needs to be done in Godot to get this working. Here we are in Godot and what we're going to do is create a root node of base node that is the most general node you can have and we'll rename it world. This will be the world that the game exists in. Let's save our scene and let's go ahead and add a new node. Let's add a sprite. And I've already got my textures down here. We're going to add a canon image as our sprite texture. Here we go. And let's just scale it a little bit. I'd say half ought to do it. Perfect. Right, now it's in the right place. Let's add another sprite for the cannonball itself. And add our cannonball texture. It's literally just a black circle and we'll just scale it right down so that it looks like it could potentially shoot from that cannon and we'll just put it over there now we're going to add an animation player so that we can animate the ball launching from the cannon let's add a new animation we'll just call it shoot and what we'll do is we'll add a keyframe to the ball for its location. So let's just rename these sprites so we know what we're dealing with. The cannon and the ball. Now we will add a keyframe to the ball's current location. Then we will skip ahead about a second and we will move the ball to where we want it to be. So it's gonna shoot and go generally in this direction. And we'll add another keyframe here. So this will animate that little bit of movement that we just did. If we pull this back to the beginning and play, that's what our animation looks like. That looks great, ball shooting from the cannon. Now let's add a bit more atmosphere to this scene. Let's grab a background. So a new sprite for our background. And let's add this texture that I have already and resize it. Also it's drawing on top of all our other sprites. So what we'll have to do is in the tree, we'll have to drag it to the top so that it goes behind everything. There we go. And if we move our cannon a little bit onto the ground, then we'll also have to move where the ball fires from. We'll have to redo our keyframe for the start because it's gonna fire from the bottom. So we need to redo that keyframe Put it just over there, keyframe that. And now, redo our little keyframe to the top. A lot of trouble dragging that little line, but we got it working. Okay, that should do it. So let's have a look, it looks good. So, let's run this program. Or in fact, let's create an empty script because uh, we actually want that animation to play when they click the fire button, which I haven't even added yet, but let's do this so long. So let's have an on ready variable called anim player to store the animation player node. And now let's create the fire button button which will fire the ball from the cannon so let's um, let's add a node called let's add a texture button node and then the texture we'll give it is the fire button 
texture which I have ready. So there's our texture button node. If we expand the textures on the right, we can see the normal texture. Let's drag our fire button onto the normal texture. It's huge, so let's resize it. I'm just going to go to the rect and scale it down to a tenth or a twentieth. Um, that should look good enough. Yeah, okay, let's reposition it down next to the cannon. So you wanna fire this cannon, you're gonna hit this button. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna send out the pressed signal to our script. And so when our texture button is pressed, we will play the animation. So we'll call our anim player, we'll call the play method, and we'll call shoot. And everything should be connected now. We'll set our world as the main scene and let's have a look. Fire! I love it. All right, let's have a look how this works in Construct. And now we head into Construct. So, let's see. Let's rename our first layer to background and let's put that background in so that we have something to work with. Well, that's the wrong sprite. Let's just grab the correct one. Here's the background. Okay, and let's resize it to match our viewport. Drag those handles in a little bit. There we go. All right, so that's our background. Now, um, we'll just move that. Now let's create a, another layer for our game objects, shall we call them. Um, yeah, game objects. So let's make a new layer, let's call it objects. And let's get rid of that hash. Let's drag in our cannon and just put it in the right spot. That looks good. Let's rename it to cannon. And now let's grab our cannon ball and also resize it. Uh, let's just use the handles. We don't have to worry about scaling it perfectly. Yeah, that looks reasonable enough. Put it in the right place. There we go. That should work. Let's put our fire button in. Let's just shrink it down. There we go, put it down. Okay, and we are ready to go. Let's just make sure that the point where the cannon is gonna fire from is at the, where the ball was gonna come from is at the tip of the cannon. And now we'll have to move our cannon back into position. All right, uh, let's go to the event sheet. We need to add the mouse object, so let's just do that. Oops, I clicked on the background. Let's just lock that. Um, let's just add a mouse object. There we go. Okay, so let's go to our bench sheet. Let's make it so that when the mouse is on an object and you're clicking that object, the fire button itself, I'm going to rename it just now. Let's make it fire button. No spaces. And the ball, cannonball can be ball. Right, so when we are on the fire button and we are clicking the left mouse button, we then want to make sure that the ball will launch. So let's make sure the ball is invisible at first and let's add the bullet behavior to the ball. That way we can set the angle of motion and so on. So let's go back to the ball now. Let's set the visible property to true. So when the fire button is clicked, the ball becomes visible. We can then set its angle of motion to negative 45. So it launches off to the top right hand corner. And really, there shouldn't be much more we need to do. Except it is firing from the wrong position. So let's just make sure that it is um, positioned on the cannon. it. And there we go. 
We can increase the speed, of course, because it does look like it's firing pretty slowly. So we can always add an action to the ball where we change the bullet behavior speed. Let's make it something like a thousand. Well, that'll be too fast actually, but let's just see what it looks like. Oh, not too bad. And there we go. Okay, let's head over to Game Maker Studio 2 and see how it copes with all of this. Right, so let's start by setting up the sprites. This is easy enough. We just create a new sprite, drag it in, and these are the sprites that we're going to use for the objects. So Game Maker Studio is a little bit tedious in that you set up the sprites separately to the game objects. So you do end up doing double work basically, but it is because they have a separate sprite editor and you can edit the sprite completely separately from the object it's attached to. So I'm just gonna quickly set up these sprites to use. This is our cannonball, we've already had the cannon and the last sprite we'll need is the background as well and the fire button too. Let's just go ahead and create those. This is our fire button. Right, let's create the objects that we're going to attach these sprites to. We will have our cannon object. Let's choose the sprite. There we go. And we'll rename it to OBJ Cannon. Let's add a cannon ball object. So Game Maker really draws out the process of putting all your components together rather than just drag and drop like Godot or um, Construct 3. Game Maker really makes you put a lot of work into getting everything set up. Once that's done, we can put them in the rooms and the process becomes a bit quicker. Here's where we can set the background. Again, it has to be a sprite. You can't just draw an image in here. So we're gonna to have to go back and create a sprite to use as the background image. So let's create a sprite again. Let's drag that sprite that I have already made. Um, we're going to rename it to sprite background or sprite PG. And we're gonna to have to size it up so that it matches the room. So let's set this sprite to the size of the room, which is 1366 by 768, and it will fit perfectly. So now we can use it as our background in our room. And it looks fine. Let's add our cannon object. Remember you have to add these to the instance layer, not the background layer. Make sure you're on instances, drag your cannon in possibly a bit big, but it'll do. Let's put our ball in, definitely too big. We're just gonna resize it with the handles. All right, now we have our cannon ball in the right place. Let's go and set up the events for these objects. So let's make the cannon ball invisible at the start. And let's set up an event on the fire button so that when the uh, left mouse button is pressed, we are going to call a user generated event on the cannonball. So let's just find the right thing. There it is, call a user event. Okay, so we're gonna call a user event on the cannonball. Let's get our objects there on the ball. Right, so we're gonna call user event number zero on the cannonball. So now, yeah, you can actually see it. So now if we go to the cannonball itself, we can add 
a user event number zero and what happens is when user event zero runs we want to make the ball appear so we want to make the ball appear so we want to in fact set the instance variable of the ball the visible uh, instance variable to one then we want to set the direction for that ball to 45 degrees and then we want to set the speed of the ball uh, 25 looks great and that's how game maker does it once again i'd just like to say thank you so much for supporting me and i hope to see you all again next time